Hello, welcome back to the glory of Christ. This is Lad Go Duncan. Uh, it's a beautiful day. I had a wonderful day today. I got to go to the temple and I got to have a wonderful, wonderful session. Brothers and sisters, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a beautiful day. It's February 26th today and we have, I believe, two, three, three more days for the, to the end of this month. Um, and today, today is just, um, uh, I thought I'd just get on and, and share some things that came on to my mind, um, some thoughts of reflection on the gospel, um, I'm trying to think what what might be a good thing to talk about today, um, what, something that would be appropriate. You know, I've talked a lot about gratitude. That's probably my favorite talk. You know, the Lord says that he that prays without ceasing Prayer, prayer is the key to possessing gratitude, is what the Lord says. You know, President Monson said it actually. He, President Monson, when he was alive, he gave a good talk on on. Um, he he talked to he said, you know, a, a prayerful life is the key to possessing gratitude, and gratitude is the parent of all other virtues. Um, that's probably my favorite quote because. You know, I've, you know, I'm living in Spokane now, and, and, uh, you know, I don't get to be with my wife all the time, but, you know, I, I do feel that I am with her in the spirit, and, uh, people might not understand what I'm talking about when I say that, and some people might that are married, they, they might understand perfectly what I'm saying, um, but I, I feel one with my wife in the spirit all the time, and I'm grateful for that. Um, if I wasn't like that, I would be very, very miserable because my wife is the most amazing person in the face of the earth. And, you know, all the things that I write in my poetry, all the things that I direct in my life is a result of her love in my life, of her influence in my life, of her beauty of my life, and the gospel's beauty and Christ's beauty and Christ's love and his blessings upon me and my life and you know marriage is the most important thing and I think you know that's one thing I like to talk about you know Satan tries to confuse all people it, it doesn't matter who you are Satan wants you know every chance that he has he's going to try to try to confuse you and try to get you to, to make a poor choice and get you to sin. And and uh, he's Satan's not smart because he's Satan. He's, he's smart because he's been around for such a long time. And uh, um, and he uses his enticings. He uses all kinds of things. And, you know, and one of the last talks I gave, the last talk I gave, it talked about turning off Satan and turning on the blessings of the gospel, you know, and, uh, you know, the sooner that you can turn Satan off when, when you are being enticed or when you are being persuaded by his influence, um, the greater uh, protection that you'll have in, in, guarding against temptation and, and, and protecting you from sin, you know. Um, it's not a sin to be tempted. Satan tempts us, but if you're tempted, it's not a sin to be tempted. It's not you doing the temptation. It's only a sin when you start um, fantasizing or, or, or thriving on that, on that enticement. But if you can turn it off quickly before it becomes a temptation, before it becomes a problem, that's the key to successful life and 
and keeping Christ in your life and, and, and stay close to Christ and stay far from sin. And that's all I have to really say about that. And I, I did say that a little bit more fully in the last, uh, the last, uh, uh, video that I gave. And, uh, you know, today I'd like to talk about, let's see here, something that I've been, I've been faced with in my life and, that is having an eternal perspective and, and knowing that Satan, Satan doesn't have anything good for us, you know, any of his enticements, you know, that they're always immediate gratification. They're always immediate gratification with much consequence, with much despair, with much, um, with much disappointment. And, um, the things that Christ offers is are his covenants and commandments, his laws and ordinances, his blessings and his gifts and his blessings and protection. Uh, Satan offers immediate gratification and and, and misery. <laughs> and that's simply how Satan is. And uh you know, there's nothing that nothing good that Satan could offer us. There's nothing good that Satan could do for do for us, and we gotta realize that he's not our friend. He's our enemy. You know, and, and uh, he's the enemy of our souls. He's the enemy of our happiness. He's the enemy of everything that is good for us. And uh, I testify to you, brothers and sisters, that as you keep the commandments as you guard yourself from the influence of Satan and whenever whenever you feel a, a temptation coming on uh, recognize it as as Satan and and turn it off turn it off quickly um, turn it off immediately because you know Satan can reward us no good thing he's he's the enemy of our soul he's the enemy of our soul and and uh, you know you can't play with Satan without with, with, you can't play with Satan without play with fire you know Satan will burn you if, if you think you can you can get away with with things that are forbidden by the Lord the Lord's commandments are not restrictions Satan's Satan's lies try to um, promote um, the glamorous life, the, the things that are immediate gratification, things that that tickle our fancy, that, are, that tickles our, our vanity, that, that gives us things that we think are, are necessities, but the reality they're not even needs. And, uh, you know, living within the realms of God produces more peace, more happiness, more freedom, more, more blessings and more self-control, you know, and, and, uh, you know, we live in a world where immediate gratification is all around us and, you know, and if we, if we give in to that influence, of um of um right and rectitude and 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 uh um Paul pray to the Satan's Satan as a victim, you know, we're we're not helping ourselves. We're not helping ourselves by doing so. And there's consequences. There's consequences for all those things. And I testify to you, brothers and sisters, that as you keep the commandments, as you uh, obey God's laws, as you as you um, stay within the realms that the prophets, the apostles, the scriptures teach, you will be happier, you will be more free, you will have more liberty, you will have more freedom, 
you will have more blessings, more, more joy, more happiness and peace. And nothing will, will prevent you from, from, from prospering and from, from being blessed and being free and being, being free. <laughs> And that's all I have to say, really, right now. That's all I could really say um, on that sphere, on the, on that 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 topic. And uh, you know, God loves us. God loves us, so He sent His Son. You know, and and when you know, that's another thing I like to talk about. You know, I I do believe that you know throughout my life I found. That when life gets hard, or when things just are not working, when things get so so hectic that they're not working, you know, there's there's reasons why. And sometimes when things aren't working, we gotta we gotta do an introspective introspective uh, look into our life and, and say, well. Are things not working because of why? And if we're introspective and we are honest with ourselves, and we look into our life and see, well, is there anything in my life that I'm doing that is contrary to the nature of happiness? Is there anything in my life that I'm doing that is preventing me from prospering or has prevented me from even acknowledging that I've done something right or I've done something wrong. <coughs> you know, and you know, Satan Satan is the author of procrastination. He's the author of disobedience. He's the author of of uh, of um, broken dreams and broken broken families. And you know he he. He's the spoiler. He is the destroyer. He is the, you know, he is the enemy of our souls, and there's nothing good that comes from him. And his influence in our life is not worth him even being in our life. And whenever we feel his influence, we can pray for him to leave. We can raise our hand to the square and say in the name of Jesus Christ I command you to leave. And he has to adhere to the authority and the power of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the authority to cast Satan out. Satan has to abide by that authority. There are laws that even govern Satan. And he doesn't want you to know that. He doesn't want you to even think that he has that 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 he has to you know, he wants you to think that he's your friend. You know, you go to the world. You get to the world. You know, I'll just share an example of this. I went you know, I when I was a kid I used to listen to to music, you know, I love music. I love music, and you know, I had not gained a testimony really of some certain things, and there were some things in my life that that were precarious, and and at this time, you know, I used to love rock and roll music. You know, I used to love, you know, I I did is you know I was young, and. I, I like the rhythm and the and the tune and the the beat, you know, and and um you know, I I didn't understand the message and I'm glad I didn't, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you know, when I grew up, when I finally grew up as but matured and realized that, you know, this this rock and roll music is 
is, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a fix, you know, it's, it's a temporary fix, you know, it has temporary satisfaction and people, that's why people that get into rock and roll music and, and into deeper things and that really get into the message and, and really understand it and, and, and do it, they find that their life is, is, is wrecked. You know, their life is wrecked. You know, the rock and rock and roll music is is not good, and I I, I do regret, and I have prayed with, unceasing, and I've had hours of of sorrow because you know I've given it to the enemy of my soul for listening to it. You know, and every time I have a uh, relapse, you know, I I I. I, 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 I might have a temporary fix, but that's all it is. There's always a, there's always sorrow that it brings because I know better, you know. And if I didn't know better, that'd be one thing, but I do know better. You know, I do know that these things are not, are, are, are designed by Satan. You know, they're a byproduct of Satan's temptations and what... He wants us to think about life, and there's nothing good about it. There is just simply nothing good about it. The kingdom of God and Satan do not mix. And uh, that's what I would like to let you know today, is that the moment you set your foot on the kingdom of God is the moment that you turn away from the world. You know, you turn away from the things of the world. And uh, going back will always bring disappointment. Going back will always bring sorrow. You know, it will bring disappointment. And uh, I can testify of that. And I am so grateful of my life that Heavenly Father has allowed me to understand that, that Satan and the world and the things of the world, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, you know the things that that tickle our vanities and 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 whatnot are temporary fixes of the world, but they bring no lasting and no no freedom freedom from from problems because you know they are problems. <laughs> That's what we have to realize is that they are problems. They are temporary fixes. They're there are things that will that will um, captivate. You know, they are the they they are in in reality the flax and cords that that wrap around us. And if we do not get out of them before they wrap around us, now I'll just explain what the flax and cord is. A flax and cord is a very very tight and strong cord. That's very small and sil silky, and when it rubs on your skin, it feels good. But it wraps around you, and and to break it, it cuts into your skin, and it, and it's very very hard to break. And it takes a scissors or a, the atonement of Christ to to to, to cut it. You, you, it's impossible to break it with your own strength without cutting into your own skin and damaging yourself and uh you know that's what the book of Lord talks about is that you know satan uses his flax and cords to bind us and uh you know when we watch these videos that we think are so so these, these uh music videos that the world puts out you know, Satan wants us to think that they're very, uh, that they're, that there's nothing wrong with them. I have, I have, I had a stake president that opened my eyes for the first time on this subject. And he said, I said, lad, um, you know, I was sharing about a movie. It, it was called Glory. <laughs> And it was a movie of the um, 51st, 52nd Regiment, Regiment Army that 
when it it was a slave army army and and this i believe it was the, the world war in the second in the revolutionary war i, I forget it was a it was a war that this uh, on it was a war with the slaves <laughs> on the slave on slavery and there was this uh as a war about the 52nd or 53rd, 51st, I, I forget which, which one it was, but it was, it, it was a, a troop that were slaves, and, and it was a very, very good movie, and it had some, some gory stuff in it, but I thought it was very good, and it was rated R, okay, <laughs> it was rated R, and, and because of its, uh, because of its, uh, um, because of its, uh, I'm trying to think what that's called. It's, uh, the, the, uh, the coloring or whatever. It, it, it shows some things that were not good. And, and uh, my state president said, "Lad, uh, you you can't draw clean water out of a dirty well, you know." And you know, it's the first time that somebody put that perspective in my life to realize that, you know. And I I thought about it. I said, "You know something that makes a lot of sense, you know." And I had to think about it for a while, you know, and it worked on me. And uh, it was the first time somebody opened my mind to how wrong and how how seductive Satan is in in uh, in putting things in our minds or, or giving us choices that that are going to uh, you know poison us with dirty water. <laughs> You know, and it, it, it made sense to me, and it stuck with me, and, and I used it. And it took a time, it has taken time, and it has taken time, it did take time for me to get away from from watching movies and listening to music that was unsavory, but it was a beginning. It was a beginning that this man gave me a, a, a tangible... Uh, doctrine that that made sense and it got me out of the problems that it was something that was the beginning that got me out of the problems or, or got me thinking about how wrong some of these things really are you know and uh, you know it was I think that 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 safe president by the way his day was Kirby Daly and he has helped a lot of people. Um, he's helped a lot of people in his in his in his life, and I, I'm grateful that he took the time to help me at that time. But I'm very grateful for that, and uh, you know, I'm grateful for everybody that's ever done me a favor. You know, I've had some good friends I went to institute with. I went. I have had good friends that have redirected my focus and redirected me away from the world and toward the things of God. And I took good friends to help me do that and to open my eyes and and uh, help me get out of the problems that I, I was getting myself into. And, you know, I will always be grateful for good friends. Um, people that were willing to very, very kindly and very, very nicely help me. And I was very grateful for that. And I'm grateful that, it, you know, you know, when I, when I think of it, you know, and when I'm not, when, when I'm, when I'm, as I perform my duty, as I'm in the path of duty, as I'm in the path of of um, the path of doing my duty and and whatnot, 
my life, I fill my life with goodness. I fill my life with joy. I fill my life with service. I fill my life with with helping other people get out of their problems. And that's why I love coming to YouTube because the things that I've learned have been very useful to me. And I know that they can be useful to you if, 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 if we allow them to be. And, and uh, you know, and I'm grateful for what Heavenly Father has done for me in my life. I've been fortunate enough to have the gospel. I've been fortunate enough to have people that know how to use the gospel. And I've been fortunate enough to have people that know how to share things with me that have taken me out of the world and have reshaped my picture of of the gospel and and the contrary different different poles of the world and of heaven there's a pull of the world and there's a pull of heaven there's a pull of the world and a pull of heaven and there it's constantly pulling on us and Satan would like for us to think that um, that his uh, influence in our life is is no of no consequence, you know. And that's not true. That's not true at all. You know, we give Satan ear. He'll take a mile. He'll take a mile. You know, we give him a little bit. He'll take a mile if not more than that and uh you know and it takes time it takes time and healing to recover from relapses that that's just the fact you know you, you know our mind is a stage okay and what we put on that stage plays over and over again and I'll just give you an example of what I'm talking about. I'm talking about music videos, music videos, or even just music themselves. You know, that music plays messages that at first seem very, very innocent, but just one, it only takes one lie and one deceit. Yeah, that music might have nine truths, but it's the one lie that will get you. And, you know, that's how Satan works. You know, he he's the author of deception. He's, he is the master of deception. He's the master of, of, of darkness, you know, and he will reward you no good thing. And wickedness never was happiness. And that's one thing that you got to realize is that that disobedience and breaking commandments is not happiness. And Satan wants us to think. And that's why he gives, makes music videos. Because he tries to make people think, well, this is happiness. These people are doing these things and this is happiness. Yes, there are things that God has ordained for men and wo women to do. Only in marriage. Properly and and uh, and wonderfully in marriage are those creative powers to be used, but nowhere else, you know. And he tries to confuse those powers and, and confuse people by by um, by people that make this kind of music and make these kind of things, you know. Uh, for what these people are destroying their souls, they're, you know, and they will be judged harshly by the Lord if they don't, if they don't stop what they're doing. And anyway, uh, you know, I it's it's been good to talk to you today because you know these are things that I've I've worked on throughout my life. These are things that I've struggled with throughout my life and. And, uh, you know, I finally come to a point in my life, you know, I'm 48 years old. I just turned 48 in fe February, 8, February 19th. And I finally come to a point in my life where I have control of my life. You know, I feel I have actual control of my life, you know. 
and um, it is the greatest feeling in the world, you know. Get it above your problems, get it above your temptations, get it above your, your demons, and having control and everything working right, working the way it should. You know, it's taken me 48 years in my life to do that. You know, it would have been great if I could have done that when I was young, but, you know, my poor, my parents, you know, I love my parents, and my parents taught me good principles, and they instituted good things in my life, but there were things in my life that I had to learn. There were things, and I'll quote David A. Bender, there's things according to the flesh that we must experience, in our life so that we can know how to act and how to react to what um, what God has given us. And, you know, it's true, you know, we taste the bitter to know to prize the sweet. And sometimes in life, that's the way it works, you know, for some people. Some people never have this experience of bitter because their parents do a good enough job in, 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 explaining to them the the purposes and properly explaining to them one thing that will never work and that one thing i'm grateful about my parents is they never did this they never said do as i say and not as i do you know that they say you know my parents have always said you know you know learn from your experiences learn from from wrong learn learn right from wrong you know learn 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 from your mistakes, you know, learn from your mistakes, and, you know, and, and, uh, you know, you know, and when you have made mistakes, it, it takes all the integrity of your soul to say, well, this is my fault, I've done it, I've made this mistake, I can't blame my parents for it, I'm the one that chose it, and even if my parents didn't fortify me against it, you know, if I want to repent of something, if I want to repent and take true ownership and to take too, true, uh, true responsibility for my choices so that I don't repeat them, I got to take true ownership of that mistake. I have to say, you know, I can't blame my parents my whole life for problems in my life that I've, I've made because of poor choices. And to get away from that, you have to take responsibility for your actions. You have to take responsibility for the choices that you've made. And it's something that you have to learn. And it takes time. It takes time. You know, and that's what we have here on this earth. We have time. We've been given us time. And we've been given gospel principles. And we've been given teachings and commandments. You know, we've been giving our agency to give us experience. And one great thing about service is that when you're serving, when you're busy serving and teaching people about the gospel, you're teaching about freedom. You're teaching them about, about being liberated, about being set free from the bondage of sin. You're teaching them about about well, things that will um, liberate them and and not captivate them and pull them into, into a sense of carnal security. You know, Satan wants us to be to, to cry in our lives. You know, you know, the Book of Mormon says you know Satan wants us to wants to get us in a situation where we are are are. Uh, are in a state where where we're we're crying all is well as I desire and prosper at the all is well, and Satan deceiveth our soul and, and takes us captive at his will. You know, as we do so. Um, you know, one great thing about service, one great thing about building the kingdom of God on the earth is that it's 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 liberating pursuits. It's liberating pursuits because it's liberating us and it's liberating the people that we're we're sharing these things with. It's giving people tools, it's giving people knowledge. And knowledge and testimony truly is power. You know, power to act, power to do, power to 
to to stop doing, you know. And uh you know, I testify to you, brothers and sisters, that that this gospel is true. And as we use our experiences, as we use our knowledge, as we use our gifts, as we use our testimonies to to build the kingdom of God and to bring to not the things that are are persuasive persuasive in the world. And, you know, one great thing that I you know, I, I learned years ago, you know, there's a scripture there's a scripture that says God has chosen the weak things of the world to compound the things that are mighty. And things that are that are that are despised to to bring to naught the things that are mighty, you know, and uh, it's the weak things of the world, the weak things of the world, the things that you know that the world looks down upon, that 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 cause people that cause. Um, that bring things to not bring the things of the world to not you know and I just I'm grateful for for the knowledge that I've had I'm grateful for the things that I've learned and I'm grateful that I get to learn those things over and over again throughout this life I'm grateful for my Heavenly Father that loves me that gives me my agency that does not force me to do good and that does not force me to do bad. That gives me agency to work against the flow of, 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 to work against the flow of greater resistance. You know, the, you know, you want to work against the flow of greater resistance. You know, and if we want to grow, we, you know, there's, there's resistance all the time. And if you're always going, the flow of least resistance then you're you're going backward and not forward and it takes a it takes a little bit of work to go against the flow of resistance but there are rewards there are benefits and we become stronger if we do and as we do you know and uh, I testify to you brothers and sisters that the gospel is a gospel that works it's a gospel of of knowledge and the gospel of power, the gospel of freedom, a gospel of truth, a gospel of liberation, of of uh, of um, opening our eyes so that we can see, you know, of open our eyes, and, uh, helping us to 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 overcome spiritual blindness, and um, and have eyes to see and ears to hear, you know. And uh, anyway, I it's uh, been nice talking to you today. Um, I'm gonna keep this. Yeah, you know, it's not very really short, but I'm gonna keep it at a little, a little bit around 38 minutes today. But uh, it's been good talking to you, brothers and sisters. And uh, you know, when I serve you and when I share these things with you, it's great because it helps me grow. It helps me grow too. And I hope there are some things I shared with you today that will help you grow and uh, help you with your ministry, help you with your life, help you with your family, help you with if you're alone, if you're with a family, if you're with, if you're, you know, whatever your circumstance. I want to thank you for coming here and I hope that the things that I share with you you may have already known if you didn't if you've learned something i the effort is worth it <laughs> and i've learned something and, and it, you know that's one great thing about service is that you learn from what you've what you've you learn you learn you grow you grow and service is one way that we grow and uh you know, taking the Lord's yoke upon herself is part of that. Is is bearing testimony of things that have helped you overcome the things and the problems that are 
pervasive in the world, and I so testify these things humbly. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. Have a good day, brothers and sisters, and may God bless you till we meet again.